Welcome back to the evening show. Now the week that was in it, we thought it would be a lovely opportunity and a great time of year to take a look at Irish-owned wineries and Irish cheeses with David Whelan and Elizabeth Ryan. Guys, thank you so much for coming in. Always a pleasure. And Thanks we really are having a little party here today. So Absolutely. Tell me about the first wine and cheese We're that we have. We're having a little fiesta. So the challenge was to find a wine that was Irish and I think this one really fits the bill because um, this is owned by a Kilkenny man. Thank you. Um, and Game of Guinness, and the winemaker is actually a gentleman called Kieran Rooney. So Kieran Rooney hails from Swords originally, although he trained in South Africa. And then, as I say, they actually fly the tricolour of this little winery in the Ventoux, and it's considered a little jewel, and it gets lots of great praise. And it's called Domaine des Anges, the Domain of the Angels. So you can see little angels floating around the label here. Oh, very nice. And it's in the area of Ventoux, which is in the southern Rhone. And it's made with great varieties that we typically don't come across too often, like Grenache Blanc and Roussan and Marcel and Claret and whatever. And with it, you get kind of lovely kind of pear drop, you know, and sort of ripe fruit characters. It's quite rich in the palate with lovely acidity. I just think it's a great tribute. And um, Kieran's been picking up quite a few um, stars in the Gita Chet, so he's, he's pretty well regarded now. And, very good. And the good news is it comes in at 12 99 from Wines on the Green. Oh, very good. So it's a small production. I think they make about two and a half, three thousand cases. So it's boutique production and it's a lot of fun and it's really quite serious as well so um, and Kieran says it's quite highly regarded in the winemaking fraternity. Mm, and the fact that you mentioned pears there, I can actually taste that. Yeah there is a lovely kind of little flower notes well, going yeah. on there and it's 2009 so it's absolutely unbelievably fresh and it's it's just delicious right now so mm. well worth savouring. Well very very nice and I think you've uh, you've managed to pick a good one there again mm. David. Well I say it's the most Irish wine that I can think of. I mean because we think about Leaville Barton and Chateau Kiwan and all these estates, but this is really an Irish winemaker and Irish owned, so it really is the ultimate Irish winery yeah. there, I believe. And Great. really good value, isn't it? But yeah, it's certainly at that price point, uh, certainly at the boutique level, and I say, if you, if you talk to Kieran, he's got so much passion, and you know, he really does want to make something quite exceptional, and he's got the great support of Gay behind him, so it's, it's a winning combination. Great, so the Irish flag here, oh, which is yeah, great. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> and the tricolour is genuinely flying over it. And they actually have jeets there. So if anyone decides they want to go off to the sort of southern Rhone, Vaughan to Tour around Provence, um, they have jeets so you can book in. Oh, yeah. very good. And uh, Elizabeth, what cheese have you paired to this? So yeah, I think we're going to try this with the Malines. Now, it could, be, I, it could be a little bit of a mix and match with all of them. And that would be nice to actually, well, if, if we get a chance to try them with all of them. But um, the Malines, which is this one here with the washed rind. And you can see it at the front there. This is a really interesting one. Malines was one of the first Irish farmhouse cheeses when the Irish farmhouse cheese making tradition was re revived. Obviously, we have cheddars and things like that, mm. but you know, actual handmade, made handcrafted cheeses. This is made down in the Bear Peninsula by uh, Norman and Veronica Steele. Their son has actually taken over the cheese making now, a guy called Quinlan, and he. Their, their regular cheese round is just a normal round of Malines, and he's done something kind of new, which is that he's taken the inner circle out of it, so it now looks like a donut shape. <laughs> oh, right. shot, shots of it probably at the beginning, and the, the miniature Malines then is made from the bit that's taken out of the centre. Oh, very good. And what that does, it's a washed rind cow's milk cheese. It allows the centre to ripen more because the contact of the paste inside it with the rind mm -hmm. gives, it a more, it give, gives it more ripeness. And so now that you've got more rind on the outside and more surface area, it ripens better, so it actually mm. it becomes squishier and and more mature. But it's it's one of our very best Irish farmhouse cheeses. Well, it tastes very I, like to me. It tastes lovely. It's as in like you know usually some cheeses they're a little bit too cheesy. I know that sounds like a silly <laughs> way of describing it, but the taste is too no, there's strong. A, there's a lovely kind of waxy character to it. Whereas it's, 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 yeah, it's, and it, and it, it's actually multi layered in flavours with a very subtle and yeah, it's it's, mm. it's elegant. It's quite delicate. I mean, as that ages now, it will get more pungent and. In fact, this might go quite well with the red. Veronica, who makes it, would have suggested I, and to I, have I it agree, with the yeah, red. I don't, I don't think it's actually a, a marriage made in heaven, this mm. combination of, of, of the white and Well, let's the, move on then yeah. to the let's, next, let's move on next, to the next one. So this one is um, coming from France. Now, there's no Irish connections with this one at all, but um, I just thought it was so much fun. Well, if, you, if you're straying from the brief, <laughs> David, I'm sure there's a good <laughs> reason <laughs> behind it. <laughs> so this one is um, coming from the area of Savigny, and Savigny is one of these areas that we don't encounter too much. It's quite trendy. Um, it's coming from the AC of um, Anjou, and here we have the Chenin Blanc grape. The Chenin Blanc gives you this kind of lovely, refreshing city, and they're usually quite honey characters in the background. And it's just so multi-layered. It's got so much mineral flavour, so much background of city. It's just, just absolutely gorgeous. It's organic, and the lady behind it, Evelyn de Pompriand, um, is just a total character. And if you read anything that she writes, you know, she picks the grapes at the full moon, and there's almost biodynamic references going on here. <laughs> and I just would urge you just to try it and see, see what you actually think. 
Well, Sauvignon is actually one of my favourite wines. It, it is, and it, it's unusual. And say that people tend to struggle with the Chenin Blanc grape because historically we think of Chenin Blanc as being a cheap grape from South Africa, mm -hmm. and, which is really unfair because South Africa makes some great Chenin Blancs as well. But in the Loire Valley, it makes some of the most important wines in the world. And I say Sauvignon is something really unusual mm -hmm. and fun. And That's lovely as well. And it, it has a kind of, it's, it's, it's actually quite hard to pinpoint all the flavours in it. I mean, mm. there's, there's honey, there's minerals, there's everything going on here. There's no oak, so it's just it's all just about the expression of the fruit. Mm. And what cheese then um, have you prepared with this one, Elizabeth? Well, now this one is, it, this should be a really nice match actually. This is Centola here, which is a raw goat's milk cheese and it's made down in the burn in County Clare. So this is the white fluffy one? Exactly. Ah, yeah. okay. And this is one of my favourite cheeses. Um, it's, it's, it's at a particularly good kind of season now. So it's, um, it's got quite a lot of lemony, honey notes and it should mm. match pretty well with it. That's beautiful. Yeah. Because I wouldn't know, like necessarily be a fan of goat's cheese, mm. but that's that's quite easy well, on e like and not too strong a, a taste. You see, the very commercial goat log that we all have come across in various recipes and menus, and as the only vegetarian option in a, in a restaurant over the years, has kind of a lot to answer for because it's very strong and it's got a very specific goaty flavour. And a lot of people have kind of tacked on to not liking that flavour, and as a result, then they won't try goat's cheeses. But this is really mild, really fresh, really herbal. As I say, it's made produced in a burn, and you can kind of really taste almost the squirrel <laughs> and what's actually being yeah. produced there and the raw milk the fact that it's produced from raw milk and not pasteurized gives you that extra layer and depth of flavor with it mm, well i think guys you've done really well on that pairing yes, it's, it's a lovely mm. it's a lovely texture on the palate as well mm. you know it's, so, it's just it just mm. let's move on then to the last one the last and see one. which one is going to work out the best so now us. now now just say that, that one's from super cream this particular one here the, the seven year and then th we're back to the to the irish boys and we see, and I think they're going to triumph here. So, I mean, typically with the Rhone, we, we tend to think of red wines as being the, the, the stronger the stronger aspect of the scale. Now, Kieran has been famed for his whites, but I think this is a real little triumph, this red. This is the Cote de Fonte 2006. And of course, here we've got the Grenache and Syrah grapes. And what you end up with is quite a big gutsy style of red wine. Um, lots, lots of red fruits. Lovely, lovely kind of mouthfeel. Um, 14 half percent alcohol, so quite, quite quite a good bash of alcohol in the background, but it's lovely rounded on the palate. Um, I say kind of this lovely. Mm, it's lovely as lovely well, isn't it? Yeah, and it's, it's some of those lovely Greek notes. You know, we, in Greek we tend to think of rosemary and lavender, and they're kind of trapped in the wine here, so it's really quite delicious. Mm. Mm. And this is you've paired this with um, this last cheese, Elizabeth, with the Saint Gall, which is the hard one there. Now, St. Gaul is made down in Fromoy by Frank and Gudrun Schinnick, and um, Gudrun is, is actually a German lady, and she named the cheese St. Gaul um, because apparently one of the monks in, in, in the olden days went over and actually bought the recipe for making this cheese from Ireland over to Germany into a monastery called St. Gallen. And that's why she's, she's renamed, she's called the cheese St. Gaul. A apparently, there was actually a huge history of farmhouse cheese making in Ireland. But then it ceased, but actually went over and was exported with the monks. So she's now bought this back. It's kind of like a Swiss style of cheese called Appenzeller. Mm. It's really, really nice as well. I think what's what's nice about the cheeses is the fact that, as I said, they're not overpowering yeah. in terms of the taste of them. Because sometimes cheeses, I just find they're just too strong. Too much. I think that it's interesting, and it's kind of like, I'm sure David will agree with this in wine. When you start with wine, you tend to like the gutsy, big, juicy Shiraz type wines. And as you get more into it, you tend to like the more laid back um, restrained, yeah, yeah, more like elegant. Pinot I think you're looking for complexity in mm. it, yeah. And it's very it's the same with cheese, that it doesn't have to be this huge big flavour. It can be really subtle layers of flavour. And that's what I certainly, as somebody who's really into cheese, would find much more attractive. So And mm. I have to say in terms of the, the line up here, I think that's definitely the best bet our best match there, the, the red with this particular cheese. So it's, it's definitely working very, very well. Well mm. we saved the best to last mm. then. Which we is we great. do we do triumph <laughs> we do triumph so hard in this. And guys you're gonna have to stay put and we're gonna have to continue on our wine <laughs> <laughs> party. There's lots to go. Lots to go. <laughs> lots to go. But uh, unfortunately, we've run out of time. So we'll stay here and have a little party. <laughs> but I better say goodbye to everybody else. Okay. So we do encourage you to uh, have a little party of your own. And if you do want to find out any more of the information on the wines and the cheeses that we've covered here this evening, all you have to do is email us theeveningshow at city.ie. But that is all we have time for on tonight's programme. David is back on Monday. Do join him then. But for now, have a lovely Paddy's Day weekend and we'll see you soon.